don't grow old the same in case. So you're gonna have different conversations because you must understand what do they eat in the Northern Cape. You know, when the boys say, hey Tada, I love you, how do they say it? Where you come from? 26 as the cut of As we launched the 16 days, 100 girls from all over the province, between the country from the ages of 19 to 25, to actually empower them with skills so that at no point in their lives they will have to sit and stay in a, an abusive relationship for economic reasons. So it's an opportunity for us to empower them, give them skills that will assist them to be independent. These girls are 19, so they have just uh, lost their grants because we stop giving you a grant at 18. So we are ensuring that they are get, we equipping them with skills that we need as a department in the facilities that we run. So they are going to be placed, that's the first thing. The second thing is that social development uh, runs cooperatives um, for women, for men, for boys, but we, we run cooperatives that we are the market. So we establish, register, and incubate cooperatives that are that provide what we need as a department. That is why we can confidently say, as a department that run and that distribute social grants, we are going to be linking our beneficiaries as we are committing to the money that we have so that by the time we reach out to other departments we at least within our allocated spend we are able to get our grant recipients into the skills set that we need in our different facilities including NPOs that are funded by the Department of Social Development. It warms my heart personally because I believe in the strength of a woman. What you received in these days, it's a key that opens many doors and many opportunities. I think I've spoken to you a lot at the gala dinner and I want to say to you reaffirm what the trainer said life is about your attitude when somebody wrote your attitude is determined by your attitude They meant exactly that. This is the first one uh, in partnership with the United Arab Emirates. Um, we've always wanted uh, to train, to focus on girls. And uh, we in the department focus on boys, and then we focus with boys and girls. And the Ministry of Women focuses on girls. But we've always wanted to reach out to girls, but we've never had the resources. So this is the first time where we actually are beginning to reach out to girls so that when they meet at our YOLO program, you only live once, then we know that uh, they will meet as equals, uh, both boys and girls. So the United Arab Emirates made the resources available and social development. So we went 50-50 in partnership and this is 
the outcome of it. Empowered 100 girls that are going home, that are going back to where they come from with energy, resilience, but also we are already beginning to identify where we are going to place them so that we make sure they don't idle. I'm honored to call to the podium the Ambassador of the United Arab Emirates to the Republic of South Africa, His Excellency Mahash Saeed Al Hamili, to deliver his remarks. First of all, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Afternoon, morning, and uh, also I want to acknowledge the deputy ministers of social development and also uh, the representative of the Mirus Academy who join you for three days here. But I can put it as 30 days instead of 30 days, uh, three days, because really the chief, as we see the environment uh, in this room, everybody have hand, hand out and everybody is answering the questions. And I was behind you when you start the first day, and really I, I enjoy the background you come from, and I think. Uh, what is, has been done in three days, just updating you or giving you more insight about your future business. I know you are coming from different environment and different district and different background, but I think now something has bring you together, which is the honest which is the love, and also your engagement in your future. Between us and South Africa, number of initiatives in this arena, what you are studying now. And why we do it? Because we have heritage of possibilities. We in Middle East, we have a dish, we have a customs that respect our guests even come late in the afternoon or come when we are taking our food because at that time we are not looking for door to be closed. Some houses they don't have door. They have just a curtain. You can wave it and you can't get in. Same as well the whole continent of Africa including South Africa. We are so customs when it comes to the guests and when it comes to our close family. Then we take it to the tribe. And second one, we do this also to empower our women to take a part beside her, her brother in town, in city, in country. Uh, firstly, I think um, it's important for us to say we selected the girls, one from different orphanages. We selected the girls through their tribal authorities from rural villages. So we, as, an, as, as a department, did not individually choose which girl could come here. We laid out a criteria. For us, you needed to be an orphan. You needed to come from a child-headed household. You needed to uh, uh, be active in your own village, uh, in the activities. So. Uh, Amakos selected the girls. Uh, we needed you to belong to a social club. We've got social clubs, Zazi for the young girls, we've got Rise uh, for the older girls, 19. We needed you to be active in YOLO, which is one of our programs, for you to be here. But above all, we needed to make sure that you have interacted with social development. You are a, a grant recipient and also we needed uh, to, to, to also reach out to teenage mothers uh, so that we know that we are able to assist them uh, to get the skills that they will need as teenage mothers. So this is the caliber of girls that you have. Uh, a collection of girls that were selected uh, with different criteria 
from all over the country, from the village to the township to the um, suburbs and it's also a different cultural group and it's inclusive of disabled girls as well. We are going to hand over certificates uh, to you and this is going to be the order of the handover. It's going to be done according to provinces. Uh, so I'm going to call upon provinces and if you know you belong to that province, you come here and then your name will be called. When your name is called, you go to the deputy minister and the ambassador for the handshakes and then thereafter you will go to the trainers to receive your certificate. After receiving your certificate, please stand here uh, so that at the end you are able to take a group uh, photo with the deputy minister, the ambassador and the trainers. Is that clear? And my manager approached me with this opportunity, telling me, uh, Jorge, there's going to be hospitality training for ladies, go the, with the D Department of Social Development. Um, I couldn't say no to the opportunity, weighing my options, considering what I want to do next year. I would like to say very thank you to Mothers of Justice for giving the opportunity. Well, it was my first time driving an aeroplane as well. The experience was great. And being here at the Velmore Hotel and Spa, thank you guys very much. My name is Helen Morris. I'm the Executive Chef and Senior Lecturer from the Emirates Academy of Hospitality Management based in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Uh, today myself and my colleague Marina Rizzi, uh, who's Director of Industry Liaison, we're talking to the girls about futures in hospitality. Uh, we work alongside the United Arab Emirates uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation to make the girls more aware of the industry, uh, how vast and how complex and diverse the hospitality industry is, and also what job opportunities the girls would have if they wanted to enter into the hospitality industry. To the people who brought us here, it's to this training, like it, it, it is really a great honor to actually um, see this happening because it shows how, how South Africa has actually taken it to consideration that um, women empowerment is very important. So I, I have to say in all honesty I've, I've been in this industry for a very long time and I've traveled pretty much most of my life and the other night um, Her Excellency the uh, Deputy Prime Minister um, hosted a gala dinner for the girls to which we had the privilege of being invited and I had the opportunity to listen to her speak to the girls and also to be seated at the table and share a meal with her and I have to say that she is the most inspiring an inspirational person that I have ever met in my entire life. Um, I came here to Africa thinking that I would be able to help touch women, but she actually touched me on that evening. And the, the genuinity uh, and the depth of her concern for the, the social welfare of this young women is something that I've never witnessed in government or on behalf of any politician or member of parliament. Um, yeah, so it's something that I will take back with me and probably from the rest of my life, uh, something that, that I will hold. So seeing each and every little detail attended to for these women, whether it is uh, personal security alarms with a homing device inside that she's provided to them or other resources that she's helping provision them with, which goes much above and beyond just a three-day training course. So it's... It, for me, it was it was really quite special. Is that the world is their oysters? The universe owes them nothing. Their positive attitude will take them. Not even the sky will be the limit. <laughs>